Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Oh, it's just unique. A very unique tractor. Uh, a lot of aluminum in its construction, which was kind of ahead of its time, and uh, they're kind of cute. <laughs> but they're a very rugged tractor. Um, they're, they're kind of crude looking. They weren't built for, uh, for beauty. They were built to, to, do the, to do the job, to replace a horse. Can a tractor be both cute and rugged? Well, maybe so, if it's one of these rare Shaw do-alls. Believe it or not, Michigan collector Ron Baggett's pride and joy is one of the bigger models in the do-all family. 1950 Shaw R6 do-all uh, riding tractor, uh, six horsepower, uh, three-speed transmission, 24-inch rubber. Um, just a good example of a Shaw tractor. Ron says there's lots to like about these little do-alls. Oh, it's a blast. <laughs> They're all fun to drive. Uh, I like the cast front end and the hood on it, and uh, that's kind of different in itself, and uh, uh, it's just a fun tractor to drive. Another great thing about the Shaw do-alls was the price. Right here is the original bill of sale, and it says $606.25. For just a tad over $606, you got the 1950 Dual Tractor, a set of cultivators, a turning plow, and a front blade. Ron says it took three months of work to make his Dual like new. The biggest achievement was the paint job, which is as close to original as you'll find. The only place we found that had the correct color paint was under the serial number tag, and we had it computer matched, and that's what we came up with. No, the purr of a Shaw engine won't knock you over, but these tractors did have a fit for small farmers, and the Shaw company even tried to promote them as a tractor ladies would like. Now these pint-sized powerhouses are a rare item. This would be considered very rare. Anything Shaw is considered rare. Um, there's probably more of some models than others, and I really don't know how rare this particular model is but I don't believe there's but one other or maybe none other R6s here. They're hard to find. They're not like where you can stumble across a John Deere. I mean, if, uh, if a guy wanted to go out and buy a John Deere today, I mean, he wouldn't have any problem to find it one the same day, but if a guy wanted to go find a Shaw Dual to buy, he, he'd have a little more of a bit of a struggle to go, to go look at. Cliff Bridgeford of Litchfield, New Hampshire, writes the Shaw Dual newsletter, and he's so enthralled with Duals, He'll even stand out in the rain to talk about these little machines and their creator. Stanley Shaw, who uh, started Shaw Manufacturing Company, he was kind of a boyhood genius as far as uh, mechanical ability goes. When he was approximately uh, 11 or 12 years old, he built his first steam engine. And then a couple of years after that, he built his first gasoline engine. And in 1903, he started uh, Shaw Manufacturing Company. Shaw's first success was a gas engine to convert bicycles to motorcycles. Just after World War I, he turned his attention to tractors. At that time, the tractors that were available on the market weren't really suitable for cultivating. Uh, the farmer still needed a, a horse to cultivate, so in order to eliminate the horse, he started with a line of garden tractors. Some of the biggest sellers were Shaw's D-Series walking tractors, powered mostly by Briggs & Stratton engines with three forward speeds plus reverse and up to five horsepower. He kept improving on them all the time. Uh, if he got an idea in the middle of the night, it would go into production probably the next day. Shaw even wrote his own ad copy and took the promotional photographs. For Cliff Bridgeford, the fever for do-alls took hold early. I got interested in do-alls because um, when I was 12 years old, my father bought me one to play with, and I thought it was the greatest tractor that was ever designed. I've still got the tractor today. I've got it here with me. And uh, I had had David Bradley garden tractors and stuff, uh, you know, previous to that. But once I got this big Shaw dual walking tractor, this would run circles around any David Bradley, and I didn't want any David Bradleys after this. I figured this, this there was just nothing greater than this. Cliff's first dual even had road gear, if you could walk fast enough, that is. The biggest do-all ever built was a 12-horsepower model with a Wisconsin engine. Bushhog bought Shaw out in 1962, and today there are just over 200 do-alls known to be in the hands of their feverish fans. 